Good morning, everyone, and welcome, and thanks for attending our webinar this morning on our Cyberbullying Toolkit. I'm Kathy Espinoza, AVP of Ergonomics and Safety here at Keenan, and I'll be serving as your host today. As noted on the earlier slide, the audio for all of your phones has been muted, so we can keep our background noise to a minimum. Our topic today is covered in about 50 minutes, and that gives us enough time planned at the end to address any questions you've got on this topic. As your questions arise throughout the webinar, please send me your questions using the chat feature on the bottom right of your screen, and I'll do my best to answer and get with Kelly so we can address as many questions as we have time for. Remember, too, that we are recording this webinar, and it will be available on the Keenan website within the next few weeks. This morning, we are very happy to have Ms. Kelly Mendoza from Common Sense Media with us today. Kelly manages the professional development programs for Common Sense Media's educational programs. She develops online professional development tools, videos, and trains educators on digital literacy and citizenship issues. Kelly has also written curriculum for Common Sense's K-12 digital literacy and citizenship program. Kelly is a doctoral candidate in the Mass Media and Communication Program at Temple University. Kelly, we are very happy to have you this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, thanks again to Keenan um, for this having these important webinar series on Internet safety. Um, this is the second in a series that they're doing uh, to address topics around Internet safety. And um, today we're going to be addressing the very important topic of cyberbullying. So let me bring up my um, presentation. Bear with me just one sec. Okay, so uh, you should be seeing my presentation now. Um, so today we are covering cyberbullying uh, and, and our cyberbullying toolkit that Common Sense Media offers. So I'm sure that your school has and district has dealt with cyberbullying in one way or another. You may be looking for resources to educate students about cyberbullying, and then also resources on um, responding to cyberbullying inc incidents. So we'll be um, discussing some of those things today. So um, what we're covering is I'm going to give you a, a more in-depth overview of bullying and cyberbullying, speaking to some of the research, uh, what the research says, and talking about some of the differences between elementary, middle, and high school. We'll talk about um, some prevention and response to bullying, cyberbullying. And then also I want to introduce to you Common Sense Media's Cyberbullying Toolkit which is a resource that we offer for free uh, to schools and educators and districts um, to really get you started on your cyberbullying education efforts. And we'll look at some sample lessons just so you can see, um, you know, what do students learn in this, uh, from the toolkit and what would teachers be teaching. So let's start by uh, addressing bullying uh, in, in a large sense, and then we'll sort of narrow in on cyberbullying. Bullying overall is a form of repeated aggression that's directed by one or more, one or more people towards another person. So again, uh, the key words in this definition I think is repeated aggression um, and directed by one or more people towards, it's usually one person, one target. Um, today we're going to be talking about kids bullying kids. So I want to note that when there's bullying or harassment that involves adults and kids, it's a different issue with different ramifications, and we're not going to uh, talk about that. We're focusing on minors today. So um, bullying occurs in many forms, and I'm going to cover four types of bullying. Most bullying involves a mixture of these four types. They're not exclusive, and that's why I think it's important to cover, cover that um, instead of instead of talking about cyberbullying as its own entity, so to speak. So we have the uh, physical bullying. You know, this would mean things like using force by hitting, shoving, pushing, kicking, you know, ki spitting on someone, holding them down, using physical control in some sort of way. Um, this may include stealing property. 
uh, belongings, things like lunch money or other things, or ruining property. Um, and it, it can happen in school playgrounds, on the way home from school, you know, in bathrooms, locker rooms, et cetera, on buses. So um, you, when you think of physical bullying, you're likely to think about boys. And although it's true that more boys engage in physical bullying than girls, girls can also um, show aggression physically. And we see this, um, I don't know if you've ever seen the girl fight videos. It seems to be this thing in middle school and high school of kids recording um, fights. Um, and, and it could be boys, but it's girls too, and then putting them on YouTube. Um, very unfortunate. So that's sort of one aspect of the of bullying. Then there's verbal. So verbal bullying is using words to hurt others. Um, it refers to words that can be spoken verbally, but um, when hurtful and aggressive things are said online or through cell phones, it's cyberbullying. And um, I'll explain the distinction in a minute. So verbal bullying, although it sort of you know can be seen in cyberbullying, it can also be face to face and include things like threats, insults, name calling, teasing, and other forms of ridicule. Then uh, there's relational bullying, and you may have heard this term before, especially in middle and high school. It's this has to do with relationships and intentionally attempting to threaten, damage, or manipulate someone's relationships with their friends or their family. Overall, it's an attempt to hurt someone's social standing and their feelings of being accepted or social acceptance. So an example of this would be, you know, purposefully leaving someone out, ignoring, um, ignoring someone purposefully, giving them the silent treatment, spreading rumors, whispering, gossiping, um, telling others not to hang out or not to play with that person. You've probably heard the term mean girls, girls. Um, and it's true that relational aggression is more likely to happen among girls than boys, but boys do participate in uh, relational bullying, and it happens across all age groups. So um, if you're particularly interested in this aspect of bullying, I recommend visiting the Ophelia Project. Um, it's the uh, opheliaproject.org, www.opheliaproject.org, for more information on that. And then we get to cyberbullying. So cyberbullying is, uh, in, according to the National Crime Prevention Council, the use of digital media tools, such as the internet and cell phones, to deliberately and repeatedly hurt, harass, and embarrass someone else. So again, uh, I want to emphasize that cyberbullying is deliberate and it's intentional. It's not the kid who is joking around and hurt someone's feelings by accident. It's not the one-off incident that um, is not repeated over time. And again, it's specific to, to kids and minors. So um, cyberbullying is an issue. It's been in the news quite a bit over the past few years. And, and of course, you know, extremely unfortunate with incidents where it played a part in a child's suicide. Um, and we know that this is an issue that schools are grappling with, parents are grappling with, and that everybody cares a lot about and wants to prevent. Um, let me go forward here. So some places where cyberbullying occurs, so you can kind of think about beyond you know, Facebook, for instance, or beyond social networking. So we do have social networking sites where this might happen. Um, chat rooms, when kids are in chat rooms, it's kind of an um, easy place for kids to sort of uh, lose inhibition and uh, bullying to occur. It's the same with instant messaging, when kids are using IM to talk to each other, that's a, a place where it might occur. One thing that people often don't think about is games, um, and this would be virtual games where students are playing with other avatars and they're chatting to each other or they're, um, sometimes you can talk to each other through headphones and, and so forth. Bullying actually, um, that's kind of a problem in those spaces, that bullying is occurring in those spaces. Uh, texting, uh, again, especially um, uh, because texting is very difficult to monitor for teachers and for parents, that's another place. And then um, up to a much lesser degree, because kids don't use email all that much unless it's for school, um, email, it can happen through email. So then you may be wondering how big of a problem is cyberbullying? You know, what does the research say? 
So this is what we know, and this is according to the Pew Internet and American Life uh, Research Project. They do a lot of research combining, uh, uh, co um, co not collaborating, what am I trying to say? Um, pulling together research done on teens and kids and media. So they've, they've actually pulled together several studies to get this figure that a third of 10 to 18 year olds say they've been cyberbullied. So, um, and this could be they've been cyberbullied once, you know, and then um, not again, you know, one time, or it could be an ongoing thing. So, of the teens who've been targets, um, they reported a range of annoying and potentially menacing online activities, including receiving threatening messages, having private emails or private text messages forwarded without their consent, having an embarrassing picture or video posted without permission online, and then having rumors spread about them online. Um, and furthermore, a 2009 Cox communication survey found that a large number of teens think that bullying online is worse of a problem than bullying in person. And 81% of teens agree that it's easier to get away with cyberbullying than bullying in person. So, um, the thing about cyberbullying is it's, it's difficult for us as um, teachers and administrators and parents to tell what's going on. Um, it, it can often happen when we're either not around or we just can't see <laughs> what kids are doing. So oftentimes parents and teachers really don't know what's going on but only see the sort of emotional toll of it, like depression or anxiety or um, kind of know when it's too late. And that's why for us it's important for kids to build a positive climate in the school and around online media and that's um, one of the things that we address in our um, curriculum which I'll show you later on. So of that third, only one in ten kids will tell parents or teachers or an adult when it happens. And this is according to, um, again, the Pew Internet Research so you may be thinking, um, you know, why don't kids tell teachers or, or what's, what's the holdup? You know, why, what are some challenges and why a kid wouldn't tell an adult what's going on? And let me explain some of the roadblocks that kids face so you can sort of think about strategies to maybe um, get around those. Um, one is that kids think that the adult, the adult won't be discreet and make the situation worse drawing attention to the situation. Um, so that's interesting because it reminds us, is there a way that we can address these incidents while being discreet and sort of protecting the privacy of the target um, and the bully too? Uh, the offenders and other kids will think that um, they can't handle their own issues, that they're a snitch or a baby or a wimp or a tattletale. So for instance, an 11-year-old from Michigan who was bullied said the bully kept texting me so many mean things, I wanted to throw my phone against the wall. I told my mom and she called her. After that, the mean girls texted me, wow, you can't fight your own battles. So again, it's, it's an interesting dynamic with, you know, kids don't want to be a snitch or a tattletale. So you have to sort of reframe that with kids and say, it's not, um, you're not tattling, you're not snitching, um, you're actually, um, What's a better way to reframe it? You're actually standing up for yourself and respecting yourself by um, getting people involved to have it stop. So um, another, in, uh, another uh, roadblock that kids may face is that they think that bullying may increase if the bullies find out that they've been reported. That's a common issue. Um, they're worried that it will actually make it worse. And, you know, some teachers, they don't know how to handle cyberbullying situations. They might not know um, what advice to provide students or how to talk about these issues. And, again, we'll, I'll show you some resources um, that you can provide your teachers to educate them on that. And then, um, lastly, some students fear telling their parents, worrying that their parents will overreact and call the principal or that they'll ban them from using these technologies as an attempt to protect them, and then they're not connected with their friends. So as you can see, I, I'm pointing this out because I think it's um, one, just knowing what's going on is one of the um, challenges, just knowing when cyberbullying is happening 
um, before it's too late, before it escalates, before it comes um, detrimental in a really severe way. So examples of cyberbullying, um, we, I, I talked about some examples, but let's look about um, a little bit of differences from elementary to high school. And what I'm going to do is point out some developmental differences and then some examples of how bullying occurs in those forms. So in elementary, um, you may think, you know, is this a problem in elementary school? And actually it is. We're seeing more and more cyberbullying happening in elementary school. As kids, younger and younger, get these powerful technologies in their hands from cell phones, they're going online. You know, some parents are even allowing their young, younger kids to have social networking profiles, even though they're under 13 and, you know, um, parents let them do it, and things like Google Plus profiles, um, those are areas where they're communicating with other people, and the more you're able to communicate with other people, the more problems can occur. Um, so in elementary, uh, kids may not, may, they may say cyberbullying, they may refer to it as just being mean. Um, so that's important, I think, to pay attention to the language that kids use. They may not always say it's cyberbullying. But um, if a kid says, you know, someone's being mean to me online or someone is um, saying mean things or, you know, you might want to look into those kinds of comments even though it, it could be a severe cyberbullying or maybe, you know, it's um, something lesser that can be resolved with conflict resolution. So in elementary school, um, you know, bullying can carry over from the playground to online. Sometimes kids that are in school, they go on um, into virtual worlds online, like Club Penguin, and they're playing games together. Even in a site like Club Penguin, which is a virtual world for younger kids, they have penguins, their penguins can have, you know, houses and, and talk to each other online, but the talk on that site is pre-scripted chat which means that you can only select and say very uh, limited things so that um, it doesn't become inappropriate. But even in a site where, you know, there's very limited chat, Club Penguin, penguins have been found to, you know, be bullying each other. So, you know, this can happen at, at, by saying very limited things, but still um, by excluding another penguin or, you know, um, saying something not nice. Um, so. Uh, that's where it usually happens in, uh, with younger kids. And, you know, there's a lack of understanding, uh, I think, with elementary of between their actions and their outcomes. Between, you know, did you know that saying something like that online, actually someone else is on the other end and it can really hurt their feelings. So, they, so younger kids need to really take a step back and understand the connection um, that they, they might not make the connection that there's someone on the other end that they're talking to with feelings and um, so forth. And then lastly, uh, communication norms. Young kids, they're learning these communication norms online, um, whereas middle and elementary, they have a, a habit more down. But, um, so they may be testing the boundaries with communication online. Let's go into middle school then. Um, and and I'm, I'm going to get into solutions uh, shortly, but I just want to sort of lay out the, the issue. Middle school is a time in which cyberbullying is really um, uh, very prevalent compared to elementary and even to um, high school. I'm not saying that it's more or less, but it's, it's an issue. You know, teachers, um, schools are concerned at this age in particular. And one is, you know, kids, again, have increased access to technology. They have expanded freedom in the sites and technologies they have access to. Parents are giving more freedom to go online to different places. And then there's also this whole developmental thing going on with, you know, kids are going through puberty. They're um, figuring out peer groups. Um, there's a lot of other sort of physiological things going on. So kids in middle school might refer to cyberbullying related behavior as, again, being mean. They might say it's, it's drama, someone's causing drama online. That's another sort of term to think about, drama. Or people being haters, someone's being a hater online. Uh, so I say those things so that you can sort of pay attention to that language. 
So examples of cyberbullying in middle school include things like um, sending threatening or insulting texts or publicly sharing messages or images that were meant to be private, whether or not the, um, uh, the target knows that they were taken or not. Sometimes they don't know a picture was taken of them and it was put online and it's an um, inappropriate or compromising picture or video. Spreading rumors, lies, or embarrassing stories posting cruel comments on social networking pages, um, forwarding, cutting, or copying, or manipulating messages and photos in order to humiliate the target. Um, another issue is that we always tell kids is never share your passwords with, uh, of your social networking sites, of your websites with your friends. And the reason is because oftentimes this, um, people, a kid might share their password with their very best friend and Regardless of how best of a friend that is, that kid will log in to their account and then do something to make them look bad or send messages out to make the student look bad. So we always recommend never share passwords. You only share passwords with your parents. And of course, you know, teachers, if you have, um, if you have websites that you use that require passwords, the teachers have those too. Um, and then also other examples would be creating a hate or a bash page in which several students or anyone online can make fun of the student and so forth. So at, in middle school, you know, kids are starting to experiment with self-disclosure, which with telling things about themselves to others online, whether or not they know those people, and usually it's to other people that they know. And, you know, this can result in bullying when another kid sort of um, takes that information, twists it around, spreads rumors, et cetera. There's a big shift in social status and peer recognition in middle school. You know, kids are figuring out their peer groups, what their friends think and, and say and so forth, really important and has a big impact. Um, and then also I mentioned physiological changes, but really, you know, things like their hormones and these changes have a big impact on their decision-making behavior and their interaction. Um, so I just want to remind all of us to remember uh, the develop, developmental changes that play into cyberbullying. And then let's look at high school. So in high school, cyberbullying becomes more about, you know, again, similar to middle school, but more about cliques, social standing. Um, targets can be bullied more because of their race, religion, or sexuality. That comes more into play. So developmentally, again, there's school hierarchy and peer groups. Um, kids are worried about, teens are worried about where they stand in their group of friends and within the school's social hierarchy and how they conform within certain groups and so forth. Um, many teens spend a lot of time thinking about how they look and feel and what their peers think of them. They feel judged by their peers. Even though they say they may not care, they do. Uh, I mentioned race, religion, and sexuality more likely to happen with, uh, to be a part of cyberbullying uh, in high school. And then, you know, there's risk-taking behavior and a lack of consequence-based thinking. Teens engage in risk-taking behaviors. They might send things or do things or post things online they normally wouldn't. They act in the heat of the moment and they, I think one of the challenges with teens and with tweens is, is the last one, getting them to think about consequence-based thinking. If I do X, Y, Z, what are the possibilities, what are the possible consequences based on that decision? And it's not a one answer thing. It's not a, a you know, um, a equals B, um, there's a lot of uh, scenarios that could play out. So um, our lessons, uh, our curriculum lessons address those kinds of subtleties in, you know, making decisions and what, um, what are the potential pitfalls of those decisions. So one thing to think about, and just take a step back, is, is to think about cyberbullying and how it's different than all of those other three forms of bullying that I mentioned, face-to-face forms of bullying. What makes it different? Um, and just, you might want to think about this uh, yourself, and I'll throw out a few options of why, why it is different versus face-to-face -face bullying. One is because it's anonymous. I mean, kids, um, they often don't know who is doing the bullying, and um, this is traumatizing because they don't know who's saying what, they, there's no accountability, and it's easier for kids to gang up and bully someone knowing they're anonymous. 
But the thing is, when you really get down to it, in, in a lot of instances, um, you're never fully anonymous online. You have um, your IP address. You, there's ways that if, if it came down to it and people were to dig deep, um, they could find out who is posting what. So um, something for, for kids to keep in mind. There's, uh, with anonymity, there's also disinhibition. I mean, researchers found that when people are online or when they can be anonymous online, the disinhibition effect kicks in, where people normally act, uh, they act in ways they normally wouldn't face-to-face -face or if their identity were linked to them. And then also it's public, very public. So the public nature of cyberbullying uh, manifests intensity and hurt. Whereas with in-person bullying, you know, a few students may see the incident. With cyberbullying, the whole school can see it. Um, so I'm pointing these things out because to get at how a target might feel and how it's very different uh, than other forms of bullying. 24-7, it can happen, you know, anytime, anywhere. It's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's um, permanent, which means that messages are hard to take down. Um, sometimes it can take a long time for website providers to, to erase or um, if they can at all. And it's incontrollable and in inescapable. By incontrollable, this means that the target feels a lack of control of the situation and what's going on. They can't um, feel that they can't do anything about it. And then also um, inescapable. You might tell kids, well, log off, you know, take a break, take a breather. Um, but the thing is, that doesn't matter because bullying can continue that whole time, and that's what the target is thinking about. Logging off doesn't solve the problem. So let's look at um, kids. what kind of kids are bullies and what kind of kids are targeted, and I'm sort of lean, getting ready to show you our cyberbullying toolkit if you're wondering about that. It's coming. So kids who bully um, often need control and power. They want to emphasize their social status. Um, oftentimes, they have a lack of conflict resolution skills, a negative outlook, uh, a sense of superiority over others, an intolerance towards any sort of differences or certain kinds of differences. They feel the right to exclude others and then lacking empathy. So these are just, you know, in all of the bullying research, these are just some of the um, uh, patterns that come out of who are bullies and what kind of kid bullies. And then um, I want to add to this, um, you know, sometimes the bandwagon effect can happen with bullying where a kid who may normally not do it may feel pressured or um, pushed to participate in the bullying. And um, that's where we really teach kids to be upstanders and not, not get involved in, um, in that sort of group bandwagon effect. So kids that are targeted, um, typically, you know, it's any kid who's different in some way. It could be as minor as how they dress, what social group they're in, to more major issues around race and sexual orientation. So other kids um, call out these differences. They try to ostracize the target. So examples would be um, kids who are targeted are often, they're maybe smaller, they may be weaker, they may be socially awkward or socially isolated or they may be gifted or exceptional in a particular area, and they also might lack confidence themselves. So how a kid responds initially to bullying will influence whether or not they, they move from a target to a victim. Um, so sometimes, you know, bullying can be stopped right away um, or, or dissipated, um, and, and sometimes it can't, and you know, it, it has to also do with the target and how they respond in situations. So we have effects. Uh, this is a quote of a team that was cyberbullying. It makes me hurt both physically and mentally. It scares me and takes away all my confidence. It makes me feel sick and worthless. And I'm just going to bring up all the effects here so I can move forward. I think, you know, I'm throwing these out there so, um, you know, you can think about it really causes not only physiological problems with the fight or flight response, we have academic problems, and then this can lead to, in very severe cases, um, suicidal thoughts and feelings, and then even things like, you know, anger, bitterness, and a desire for revenge. So, um, oops, I'm trying to move forward here. 
So you may be wondering, well, what do I look for then? How, how can I tell what's going on? I think, you know, um, here are some signs to work for, or, or look for, excuse me. Um, and and this is, these might be more helpful for parents since they usually see, you know, a lot of the online uh, communication or at least they're around or uh, maybe spend some time with that. But as, as teachers or administrators, you may want to watch in a change of behavior. Sometimes you'll see a quiet, sad, or depressed if you can um, keep a more sensitive lookout for that. But um, I think the important part of this slide is that teachers, parents, coaches, relatives, you know, they need to share perspectives about any sort of signs that they may see. And, and maybe a teacher might say, hey, you know, I noticed that Julie is really um, been quiet lately, and I, I just don't know what's going on. So we can't assume that it's cyberbullying, but it's something. So maybe Julie wants to communicate this to the kid's parents, to the kid's coach, or something like that, just to sort of um, uh, try to understand and watch out for when these things are going on. So this leads to uh, common sense media and where we can help. Now that I've provided this sort of foundation on bullying and sort of the uh, nuances and issues, let me tell you a little bit about Common Sense Media. We are uh, an organization based in San Francisco and we're dedicated to improving the lives of kids and families by providing um, the information that they need to thrive in a world of media and technology. So one of the things we do at Common Sense, um, aside from having a whole website with ratings and reviews and parents' advice on media issues, is we have a whole education division. And one of the major parts of our education division is our K-12 digital literacy and citizenship curriculum. And we offer, you know, a comprehensive curriculum that's free online for you um, on digital literacy and citizenship issues. So from that curriculum, we have um, dozens and dozens of lessons, but in the Cyberbullying Toolkit, which I'm going to go into the website and show you shortly, um, we've pulled out those resources and put them in a toolkit for you um, to start with, you know, to start addressing these issues, particularly the education component. Before I show you the Cyberbullying Toolkit, um, it's the, the one-stop shop that you'll need to get started. Um, I want to talk about our curriculum a little bit so you get a sense of, you know, how, how we educate students. All right, so our curriculum is balanced in tone, which means that we don't take a fear-based approach. We don't think that it's effective. We try to balance that, you know, kids love media. It's wonderful. It um, teaches important 21st century skills, but, um, we don't, we, we recognize the possibilities and perils. We don't just focus on telling kids what not to do. We, ha we have that balance in our curriculum. It's flexible, meaning you can start anywhere. Um, you can cherry pick lessons. Each, each unit works as a standalone unit in the curriculum. Even each lesson can be standalone. Although, you know, it's nice to have a progression. We offer that too. But if you just want to start with cyberbullying, um, it, such as the Cyberbullying Toolkit, you can. And then best of all, in a time where budgets are cut and resources are cut, it's free. And the reason why it's free is because we're funded by philanthropic funders. For this project, it was MacArthur, uh, Hewlett, and Sherwood Foundations. So all a teacher has to do is register as an, as an educator to be able to download the lessons and the videos. I also want to mention that it's research-based, which means that we worked with the Good Play Project at the Harvard Graduate, Graduate School of Education um, to create the curriculum uh, based on their digital ethics research. And then, it, particularly in, um, uh, we have a student-centered curriculum with role play, critical thinking. We have great videos for kids. They, we feature real kids talking about real issues. And you may think, okay, to to teach about cyberbullying, you need to have computers for students. I mean, they need to have technological access, and you can actually teach about cyberbullying, cyberbullying with no computers at all. Um, our curriculum is low-tech with options for teachers to include 
online tools, media creation, etc. But you can go into a classroom with the lesson, with the handouts, and no technology, and teach about these things. And that's what makes it really great. Okay, I'm going to skip that. Um, we're standard aligned, Common Core. We just um, came out with some videos on Common Core. If you're interested, it's on our professional development page. And best of all, you can tell your teachers that this is really easy to use. They can literally pick up a lesson, not, not know, you know much about the topic, and be able to teach this. We provide everything that they need, step-by-step -step instructions for them to teach it. And they can just go online. They can look at our lessons online or download them. So, you know, teachers at different schools, they're, they're addressing cyberbullying different subjects. It may be the English teacher. It may be the librarian. It may be the technology teacher. It may be the social studies teacher, you know, or the guidance counselor or um, character education. So um, we make this as easy as possible for teachers. So at this point, I want to look at the Cyberbullying Toolkit and introduce this to you and hope that you share this um, with people in your district and with teachers. So let me show, switch my screen. Hold on one moment. Uh, hold on. Bear with me. Okay. Let me get to my cyberbullying toolkit, just one moment. So if you are following along, um, I encourage you to visit the website and, and follow along with me, um, but you'll also see it on the webinar. So you will go to commonsensemedia.org forward slash educators forward slash cyberbullying dash toolkit. And there it is. So what you're seeing is the home page of the toolkit. And on the right here, we have a really excellent video that I encourage you to share, um, again, with your school, with your district. And also, you know, go ahead and share it on Facebook and, and tweet it and so forth. I'm not able to show it here. I encourage you to watch it. But it's a really inspiring video to get people motivated and interested and, and then direct them to our toolkit. So that would be a great link to share with people, the Stand Up, Stand By video. So what the, the Cyberbullying Toolkit is broken down into elementary, middle, and high school. And it really um, jump starts your efforts in cyberbullying and cyberbullying education. What I'm first going to show you is just the education um, component, and then we'll, we'll look at each one. Let's start with elementary. For each grade level, we recommend two lessons. And so this one, the lessons are right here in your classroom. We have screen out the mean for grades two and three, and group think for grades four and five. Uh, a teacher can go here and download the lesson. So I'm going to show you what that looks like, because all of our lessons are in PDF format. You can see we, we have a lesson plan here um, with learning objectives, how to prepare, et cetera. Each of our lessons takes uh, about 45 minutes. Or um, some teachers, oops, let me go back here, they like to view the lesson online. So you can do that as well. And hopefully we'll get there. Um, so they might like to just work off of the online version. And you can see that um, the teaching plans, as I go down, they can just click on uh, Teach One, Step One, Step Two. There's Wrap Up. And there's also uh, ideas for homework and extension activities. Then on the right, I want to point out something here. With all of our lessons, we have parent resources. With every single lesson, we have a parent tip sheet. So for instance, on this, we have a parent tip sheet for elementary um, on cyberbullying. And we also have videos. Um, it's not with every single lesson, but with most of them, a video that can be shared with a parent. And then in addition to that, we often have videos for our lessons um, that, that are incorporated in the lesson. Um, and that's all, always found on the right. So this is just an example of um, screen out the mean one lesson. We'll go back to elementary. Um, let's, and then uh, at the bottom, so we have in your classroom here, 
And then if you look at towards the bottom, we have in your community. So what's important to Common Sense Media is to really engage parents in digital citizenship education, in cyberbullying education, and get them involved in these issues. Um, because as you know, with cyberbullying, it can happen at home, it can happen at school, you know, it's really blurring the lines, and parents are involved, and teachers are involved. So we have um, a toolkit for parents um, in terms of you educating parents or you sharing things with parents. We have a short slide presentation uh, if you want to do a, a, a parent presentation. We have a parent tip sheet, uh, a discussion guide that helps you start the conversation with parents, just some prompts and some questions and sample answers and responses that you can give them, and then a communication template to help you spread the word. So for instance, with the presentation, oh, that might not show up. It's basically a slide deck um, that you can share if you're doing a parent presentation. And with the documents, let me go into the documents here. Um, this lists what the kit has for parents. So I talked about the presentation. Here's a video link that you can um, share with parents, five things you need to know about cyberbullying, cyber a discussion guide, uh, tip sheets, and communication templates. And that's all in this document right here. So I'm going to scroll down. Um, Kelly, Kelly this, is, yep. this is Kathy. We've had a few questions on what availability is this in Spanish. Oh, okay, that's a good question. Um, we don't have this available in Spanish, but um, if you contact, at the end I'm going to give you our email. If you contact us, we do have parent tip sheets in Spanish, just the tip sheets. Um, and I can, they're actually the, um, I'm not sure why they're here, but I can direct you to where those are, and hopefully that'll be helpful. Thanks, Kathy. Any other urgent burning questions? Nope, you're doing great. Okay, okay, good. Um, so yes, we do have um, parent tip sheets available in Spanish, and not any other languages right now, um, but I think, you know, that's, um, we're working on increasing our, our translating all of our materials, uh, but I don't have a date yet. So again, I'm just showing you the parent tip sheets uh, for elementary, at least, because this is we're in the elementary part of the toolkit. Um, uh, another uh, kind of pared down tip sheet, and then what I wanted to show you is a template. So if you want to put something in your school newsletter or send out something on your, you know, whether it's a hard copy or an email newsletter, we have a communication template. And then also we have a, a like a press release for your school. So maybe your school is, is launching some sort of cyberbullying effort. We offer a template for a, a press release. Okay. So let me go back here. And I just want to show you... Um, uh, middle school, we'll just go into each one. We have our two lessons, Crossing the Line and Be Upstanding. And Crossing the Line is great. We have this video here of Stacy telling her story about being bullied and kids talk about her story and talk about, you know, what happened and how it, you know, could have been prevented. It's a really great video, a great way to start the conversation. And um, then I'll go to high school. We have, again, the two lessons and um, the toolkit for parents, high school parents. So um, taking perspectives, that's kind of one of our popular cyberbullying lessons because students are watching a clip from a TV show, Friday Night Lights, and they're, discuss they're discussing the decisions that the characters made. Uh, it was a bullying situation. And then they really learn perspective taking in, in that lesson. So, you know, the thing is, teachers can, you can direct them to this toolkit and they can really start whatever, at whatever grade level that they're um, teaching and they can just start by picking up and they, they really don't need much at all in terms of training and so forth. Um, we, we try to make it as easy and straightforward as possible. So uh, before we get to questions, I also want to point out um, at the bottom we have resource links for administrators, for kids and teens, and then also for parents. So I'm guessing that most of you are administrators, and um, so we have some links here. 
Uh, some of these areas are, are research, like here's Pew Internet and American Life. I mentioned that earlier. But some of, uh, some of the links will provide you information, like the National Conference on State Legislatures will provide you information on cyberbullying law, if you're wondering about that. Um, and I, I have a couple additional. The Cyberbullying Resource Center also has information on policy and law. Um, because we, at Common Sense, we don't do as much with um, policy recommendations. However, I do want to show you our brand new uh, response flowchart, and then we'll um, to wrap up after that. So let me bring this up a little bit bigger and zoom in a little bit. So what this flowchart is, is just um, a way to guide administrators for responding to cyberbullying situations. We partnered with uh, No Bully, which is a um, organization that does uh, conflict resolution and conflict mediation for students and for the school community around cyberbullying. They're great. And then we also worked with Fagan, Friedman, and Fullfrost and this is all listed up here, they're um, F3 is what they're called, and they, um, they work with doing e-matters with schools and districts. Um, and so we have a lawyer there that we worked with in creating this flow chart. But as you can see, you kind of start with, okay, reporting of a cyberbullying incident, and kind of, you know, what steps or what areas, what steps you should take and to get to what end result. So, for instance, if the cyberbullying occurred off campus, there's, you know, or did it occur on campus, either way you have to preserve evidence. And then we kind of break it down. And I'm, I can't explain this whole thing right now because it's <laughs> we don't have the time, but it's really self-explanatory. I think one of the things that um, Namita Brown, the lawyer who worked with us from F3 on this, says that if there is a um, substantial disruption to the school environment, to school, then um, it's different than if you look over here, if, uh, for instance, maybe cyber, cyberbullying occurred off campus and caused no substantial disruption to school, and there's no substantial disruption, then you may want to offer more of a conflict mediation response rather than a punitive response. So um, no bully offers this, these sort of conflict mediation um, training and, and systems. So uh, we, we just released this, you know, we haven't um, had a chance to know what kind of, how people are using it or what kind of feedback you have. I would love to know your feedback on this chart and, um, you know, we're kind of just putting this out there hoping that it would help guide administrators. Um, so I, at, at that point, I'm going to go back just a moment here. Go back to the home page here. And um, in a nutshell, that's a toolkit. We have our video. We have our uh, lesson plans for elementary, middle, and high school. And we have our parent outreach toolkit. And then we have our cyberbullying response flowchart and resource links. Um, there's just a couple more slides I want to show you on my presentation, and then we'll, we will get to questions. So just one moment while I switch screens here. Okay. So I wanted to show you uh, just a couple more things towards the end. And show this to you. So um, I wanted to offer you a, a couple additional resources. I mentioned no bully. No Bully has this great, again, conflict mediation, um, conflict resolution system that they are, they've tested and proven to be effective in schools to really train um, people in the school to deal with bullying situations using conflict mediation and not a punitive response. So I encourage you to check them out. The Cyberbullying Research Center has great information on research and particularly on policy. There's some great information in there. I keep safe. Um, Generation Safe is an, um, another one that we like. Um, they have cyberbullying resources, and then the Center for Safe and Responsible Internet Use. So these are just some additional resources. And um, next steps that I would encourage you to visit the toolkit. Uh, if you 
uh, and share with your colleagues. And I thought I had one more. Hold on. And use the flowchart. I'm I'm interested in um, your response to the flowchart. We again we just released it maybe uh, a couple weeks ago, so um, I'd, I'd be interested to hear your your response or how you're using that. And then if you have questions, and, and the person who had questions about Spanish materials, um, please email us, and I can direct you to the link of where those Spanish uh, materials for parents are. So with that. I thank you for attending. We have some time for questions. Yes, we do. This is Kathy Espinoza again. Before we hit quite a few of our questions, I do want to remind you that Keenan is an insurance broker and, and a consulting firm. We're not a law firm or an accounting firm. We don't give legal advice, tax advice, and this presentation or the answers are not construed as legal or tax advice. Please follow up with your own legal counsel. Kelly, one of the biggest questions that's coming up is about what can a school do and have in place for cyberbullying? What resources do you recommend for including cyberbullying in the school policy? In the policy? Well, I could start with um, the policy you know, I would really recommend going to the Cyberbullying Research Center. Uh, we don't give policy advice. <laughs> we, we would like to show, we may be showcasing some policies, but we just don't give that kind of advice. So I would recommend, um, you know, if you haven't already, um, coming together uh, in your district to determine the policy, and you do have to include your uh, district lawyer in that process. But in terms of seeing sample policies and things like that, I think, um, again, Cyberbullying Research Center has, that, has those resources. In terms of, um, you know, what schools can do, uh, I think, you know, the biggest thing is education. And if you don't have any cyberbullying education, just start with these. Uh, we have two lessons for elementary, two for middle and two for high. Just start with the two. Um, but I think beyond, you know, just teaching lessons and so forth, what I'm seeing is the schools that are, um, that are doing a good job of creating a positive school climate around respect, around how we treat each other, those schools are really um, seeing success. So um, getting students involved and invested in these issues, having them take the lead and, and do things, um, school initiatives, rather than having it come more as a top down. I think those are where we're particularly seeing, you know, where the climate has changed. Um, and of course, that's no small feat, but um, that's kind of what I'm seeing. So, hope Good. that answers the question. Well, along with that topic, we've got a question about what age or grade level do you suggest that a school begins education about cyberbullying? How soon is too soon? Well, um, that's a good question. I think, you know, we recommend the earlier the better. Uh, I mentioned, you know, we have, uh, you know, kindergartners and first graders with cell phones. And again, once they have these tools, um, it's easier for them to sort of um, communicate with others and, and to get into uh, whether that's nice or not nice communication. Um, so we, we have elementary, as you saw, elementary cyberbullying lessons. But I do want to mention that if you are, um, uh, we did a presentation on E-rate with you, Kathy, a, a couple weeks ago. If you have um, are receiving E-rate and um, you're doing E-rate, uh, what the new thing for E-rate now is uh, E-rate fulfillment is education requirements. One of those education requirements is on cyberbullying. So if you're receiving E-rate support, you must now be educating kids about cyberbullying. That's part of what you should be doing. So that's, again, a K, uh, uh, earlier the better kind of issue. Very good. And I also want to remind everybody that that E-rate webinar, Kelly, that you gave was recorded. And they can find that on Keenan.com. I've got another question. Um, are there toolkits for other digital citizenship topics that you know of? Oh, yes. We, we have a, a toolkit. I just mentioned it on E-rate. And let me make sure that I, and maybe I can type this in if I get it right. Um, 
I can put it in the chat window, so hold on a minute. So if you are, again, applying for receiving E-rate support, um, there are new educational requirements. I'm going to put this um, I'm going to put this in the chat box for you, the link to the E-Rate Toolkit. So that's another uh, toolkit that we offer. We are working um, on a, it's a little bit different, but on a toolkit for um, gender and media, gender and digital media issues, that would be out in the fall. So it's a little bit different, but again, we have, you know, kids sort of, especially middle and high school, showcasing their gender and um, in maybe good or bad ways online. So we have, we'll be coming out with that toolkit in the fall. Excellent. Well, while you're typing that in, we've also got a question on why do you personally think that a bullied child would spend more time with this media? Oh, a child that's bullied spending more yes. time with media? Um, I, I'm not sure that the, the, the kid would spend more time, but here's, here's a, a couple uh, responses to that. One is um, it's difficult when there's a problem with media for a parent or a teacher to say, um, just log off, just don't, don't use it, um, you know, just get off the screen, et cetera. And the reason is because you're cutting that child away from their, the rest of their social network. You're cutting them off from their life, so to speak. So to tell them to, you know, it's okay to take a breather, but to have them use less or, you know, it's actually not solving the problem. Uh, it may be a temporarily breather, but it may not solve the problem. And then, um, you know, oftentimes when you're bullied and it's uh, getting more severe, the, the target wants to go online to know what the heck is going on. You know, what's being said about me? What's being posted? Like, and it's a kind of constant thing. So um, even though that would be detrimental, seem detrimental, and it might be better just to not know what's going on, with any situation, like they want to know, you know, what's being said about them. So that's, those are sort of the um, kind of catch-22 is that, um, it, to answer that question. But in terms of the research, I can't say that, you know, the research says that a target is actually online or, or uh, using media more. I don't know if that's exactly true or not. Hmm. Okay. Well, it's about three minutes before our end time, and I'd really like to thank Kelly for joining us this morning. It's been a wonderful wealth of information on cyberbullying. I want to remind everyone that Kelly will be back with us on June 5th where we are focusing more on teaching the parents about the impact of media on kids. We have a lot of school districts asking for resources that principals and teachers can use for parent night types of education. So please register and join us for June 5th. That will be at 10 o'clock as well. I want to thank Kelly and thank everyone for their participation and their time this morning. Have a great week. Thank you. <laughs>